Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds of Her Love, part three. Um, little quick recap of last time, last episode. We saw Carrie in school, we had lunch with her, we gave her our number, and she called us. And she's like, hey, I'm more comfortable talking to people on the phone. So, yeah, I want to protect her, cherish her, and be her friend, and then be her husband. So, that's my intentions, that's what we're going for. Let's get into part three. Hope you're having a great day. Sit, you know, wait, grab your favorite snack. You know, go in your room or somewhere else where you won't be disturbed. Put on your headphones. Just, just sit back and relax. I'm, I'm here with you. It's your friend, Mark Hoppy. You can talk to me. You don't have to call me Mr. Sue, it's okay. Just, you know what, call me, call me Oppie even. That's okay with me. All right, now that you're relaxed, Let's start episode three. Carrie and I bid temporary... <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Okay, now let's start episode three. Carrie and I bid temporary farewells, and I head downstairs, leaving the phone on my desk. We're about to have dinner, boys. An... Oh, aromatic... Aromatic... Smell hits my nostrils as I enter the dining room. Three pairs of eyes are looking in my direction. It seems my family are well into their meals. Finally decide to join us, brother. My little sister gives me a cheeky remark as I pull out the chair next to her and sit down to feast upon my now lukewarm meal. I'm too lazy to microwave it. How was school? You went about an hour early, didn't you? You knew about that? I did tell you the clock was broken before you left. Oh, so that's what she was trying to tell me. You can hardly call it before I left. I was out the door at that point. Well, the extra school is good for your brother. Don't tell him about it next time. <laughs> that was almost like a Hulk Hogan Gibraltar brother. My father lets out an exuberant laugh as I continue eating. I don't think he realizes that no matter what time I get to school, classes don't start until they're scheduled to. In retrospect, I did get something out of going to school early today. I wouldn't have met Carrie otherwise. That reminds me, son. Have you met any fit girls? I asked you at breakfast and I didn't hear your response. Okay. Our, our father is epic. Like, this, he wants us to have a fit girl. That, ooh, ooh, ooey. That, that is what you should, you need to instill that into your into your offspring like you need a fit a fit uh mate to to make more fit children i respect our father okay uh mother speaking that's because it was a stupid question interrupting my father just as she did before my mother joins the conversation perhaps i should actually give him an answer he won't stop asking me otherwise uh no i have my computer <laughs> That's, I, th I think that's, like, the worst answer we could give, because we might get grounded or something. Uh, there is someone. I mean, we just met her, but, like, dude, we could say that, because then that, that would get him off our case. Or not really. You know what? There is some. I believe Carrie is someone, so I think we're going to say this. This this would be a, a pretty big joke answer, but I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, I'm, I play it safe even in, in a video game. Don't judge me. My relationship with Carrie is somewhat primitive, at least in a sense. I haven't even known her for more than a day, and I'm talking to her over the phone. I can't deny I find her cute, attractive even, but I don't think this is the time or place to be thinking about that sort of thing. Telling my father about her doesn't seem like a good idea in the slightest. Don't worry, son. That face is the only answer I'll ever need. The look on it, your face, I know what it means. Go get her, son. That's pretty epic of him. My father gives me a thumbs up from across the table, and my mother bats him a scornful expression. He's not a pervert like you. You don't have to listen to him, Markapi. A clean plate sits in front of me as I finish up the remnants of my meal. I want to leave the room quickly so I don't have to face any more questions my father might conjure up. Uh, I stand up from the chair, moving to the sink to quickly wash my dish. 
The thought of Carrie lingers on my mind as I leave the room and make my way step by step up the stairs. It's not unreasonable to suggest that I could end up in that sort of relationship with her. Need some water here. Ah, refreshing. There's no sign of her having any friends aside from myself, and she's pretty attractive to be honest. The fact that she doesn't have any friends, it just makes me want to protect her and be her friend so much. Protect Carrie at all cost. Letting my mind wander like this isn't good. It's too early to think about developing my relationship with her. We'd only just met this morning. On the topic of Carrie, I need to call her back in a minute. Waiting for her to call again isn't an efficient use of time. Swinging it open, the door to my room creaks as I enter. My eyes shift towards my desk and I reach out for my phone. Clutching the phone in my hand, I redial the last number that called and Carrie's number appears on the screen. It doesn't take long for her to pick up. I wonder if she was waiting for me. It was a pretty quick answer. Hello? Dude, I love her voice. I love her. She's real to me, damn it. It's still real to me, damn it. Hey, Carrie. Where were we? We weren't really talking about anything. That's right. We weren't really talking about anything in particular before. How about we talk for a bit then? Uh, about what? God, she's cute. Uh, Carrie's stutter flares up again. It's kind of cute, but I wouldn't really tell her that. What am I saying? Hmm. What about hobbies? Hobbies? Yeah. I know you like literature, but is there anything else you like? Carrie pauses for a brief moment, and the sound of her breathing flows out of the speaker beside my ear. I like... the harp. The harp? You mean the instrument? Yes, I can play it. So she can play the harp. That reminds me. So, it's like the school's logo, then. The harp is... A classical Celtic instrument. That must be it. I'm sure Wales is a Celtic country. What about yours? My what? Y your hobbies. She wants to know my hobbies. Well, I did ask her the question after all. The problem is, though, that I can't really think of anything that I would consider a hobby. There's nothing notable. Would you like to borrow one of my books? Sharing a hobby with her wouldn't be a bad thing. I guess I could give it a go. Sure, you can lend me one you like. Okay. Will you meet me at lunch? It's a date. So I can give it to you. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Thinking back on what my father had said before, I can definitely say that I like Carrie, though in what way, it's hard to tell. It's not unreasonable to say that there's a possibility. She is kind of sweet after all, though I don't know. I shouldn't really think about it now. Thank you. I promise you'll enjoy reading it. Oh my gosh. I imagine Carrie pulling a cute smile to match the enthusiasm as she... Uh, let me start over. I imagine Carrie putting a cute smile to match the enthusiasm she put into that statement. She must really have a passion for reading beyond wanting to study literature. I'm looking forward to it. I hear a voice that isn't Carrie's coming from the end of the line. I guess someone must be calling up to her. Sorry. My father's calling me for dinner. <laughs> if, if, if you're just listening to this and not actually looking at the screen, it says... Sorry, Markopi, but she just says sorry instead of my actual name. If she said Markopi, dude, I'd, I'd freaking lose it. I'd, I'd just be on the floor. Um, this is actually really epic. It's almost like I'm actually having a conversation with her, which doesn't happen often, which is pretty cool. Or sad, I don't know. Uh, don't worry, I left for dinner earlier. You go and have yours. I'll see you at school tomorrow. Uh, okay. 
I'll see you then. Goodbye. Bye. The line falls silent as Carrie hangs up, and I place the phone back down on my desk once again. For the first time this past fortnight, I'm actually looking forward to going to school. I uh, freaking uh, yeah, I love Fortnite. I, I love the two weeks of just playing Fortnite. Carrie and I have seemed to have developed quite a good friendship within just the course of a day. It's quite surprising, really. As I returned to the seat by my desk, I peer at the sprawl of papers I had left lying before me. Oh right, I was doing homework. There's nothing else I can think of doing, so I reach up to the shelf where I had left my workbook and continue on with the task I was doing. If I get it out of the way now, maybe I'll have more time later in the week to speak with Carrie again. That's a good work ethic, young Markapi. A uh, breeze rustles my coat as I approach the school gates. In contrast with yesterday, I'm actually here at the right time. The sounds and sights of other students fill my mind as I move swiftly to get to homeroom. The mornings this time of year are very cold, but I expect it to be a lot warmer this far south. Dispelling the idle thoughts in my head, one thing sure is missing. The presence of Carrie. I kind of walked to school with her yesterday, so I thought I'd see her here I'd see her here again today. Though I guess for her it wasn't a mistake that she came so early. She told me to meet her at lunch so she could give me a book, didn't she? That sure is something to look forward to. My timetabled lessons don't look very promising, so it'll give me something to think about until then. The half-full classroom is split between those enthralled to begin lessons and the apathetic slackers who just want to get it over with. I sit at my desk and join the latter group. Dust shimmers as sunlight enters through the windows. One by one, more students enter the class as the clock on the wall creeps towards 8 o'clock. My mind wanders onto the thoughts of Carrie once more. Where am I supposed to find her when the lunch bell rings? The most reasonable place would be the cafeteria. That's where I found her yesterday. Or maybe not. I doubt she'd be comfortable giving me a present in front of a crowd of people, even if it is just a book. I lean back against the chair, as I typically would, and slowly watch the clock spin and spin as lessons go by, waiting for the lunch bell to arrive. Stretching my arms, I look up at the clock to check if the sound I just heard wasn't a hallucination. I don't have schizophrenia as far as I'm aware. People are definitely getting up and leaving the classroom, likely heading towards the cafeteria. Some do stay behind. I guess various Japanese high school customs still stick, even in a foreign school. The curriculum may be different, but the attitude of the students certainly isn't. Standing up, I trail behind everyone else to leave the room. Looks like I'm the last person to leave. The corridor isn't the only thing that greets me as I step outside. Here you go. I promised to give it to you. Before me stands Carrie, basking in the sunlight. A book is held out in her hands and practically shoved into my chest. Her face is red, apt for the situation. I'm pretty sure mine is too. The blossom of embarrassment on her cheeks is a cute sight. She seems to be reluctant to make eye contact though. <laughs> this is intense. It's only better for me as I get to look at the glint of my own reflection in her amber eyes. Th thanks. I thought we were going somewhere else. The book itself isn't. It looks fairly worn. Uh, judging by the condition of the pages, she must have read this quite a few times. I am only borrowing it, so she probably wants to read it again in the future. You're welcome. It's one of my favorites, so I hope you enjoy it. She lightly exclaims that fact, and I take the book from her. The title is embossed on cover as opposed to a fancy design or a sleeve. 
It must be a fairly old print. Despite its blemishes, she seems to have taken quite good care of it. Once again, I look at Carrie's cute profile. She still holds a blush, which suits her all too well. An adorable trait of hers. Her breath is still ragged with nervousness. It's a pretty good close-up. I watch her chest move inwards and out as she regains control of her breathing, though I quickly look away after. I realized how perverse the action is. How about we go get some lunch then? We can't keep staying around here. I slip the book into my bag carefully and invite Carrie to join me for lunch. S sure. I'd love to. Carrie slightly jitters as we both head down the corridor towards the cafeteria as I spend my second lunch break of the week with her. No doubt I can get used to this, though I feel as if I already am. Noise resonates through the walls of my room as I hear my sister blasting some foreign pop music, all whilst speaking to her friend on the phone. I would go in there and tell her to quiet down, but I'm too lazy to do so. After enjoying a nice lunch break with Carrie, despite neither of us really saying anything, the remaining classes were rather dull and uninteresting. The only thing that really kept me going was the thought of Carrie, as dodgy as that sounds. I look to the right. Beside me, beside me sits the book that Carrie had given me earlier. Reading it now would give me something to do. But I don't think I could make it that far into it. It's quite late, and I still have some work left to do. Though, I'm reminded of Carrie's flustered face as she presented it to me. It really meant a lot to her. Giving it a read couldn't hurt, could it? Oh, we are- dude, if Carrie gave us this book, lent us this book, and like, we read it, like, that says a lot. That means, hey, we value that. Who, who picks this, by the way? Who, who does this? I could see the skim option, but just don't, don't read it. Like, no, we're reading that book. We're reading that sucker. After we take a sip of water, of course. Ah, that's good. The book is fairly thin, though it'll still take me until tomorrow night at the earliest to finish it. That's if I can read it fast enough. Though if Carrie asks me about it tomorrow, at least I'll have something to talk to her about. Grasping the book, I open the cover and begin reading it page by page. The theme of it is quite apparent, even before the end of the first chapter. It's a love story. Epic. The book... <laughs> the book... Uh, the book suits Carrie pretty well. It would have been weird if the book was a sci-fi novel or something absurd like a guide on dog grooming. Does she even have a dog? I wouldn't know. Soon enough, I find myself at the end of the second chapter. So far it's been fairly interesting, definitely something different than what I was expecting from a love story. I should probably make a few mental notes of what I've read up so of what I've read so far, just to give us something to talk about. She doesn't really converse that much. I want to talk with her more. I set the book down beside me where it once sat. My body twists as I slip out of the space between the chair and my desk. For once, I should probably get to dinner early. I really hope this game lasts a long time. I hope this isn't like another, oh, you get seven days, because we're already on day two, fellas. I, I re I'm really enjoying this game, just like the voice acting alone, so I, I hope it, uh, extends for a very long period of time is the point I'm trying to get to. All right, the path to school has now become quite familiar. Now that I've had two weeks to remember it, a fortnight even, a mount of gust blows leaves across the pavement and I watch them get tousled around with direction, without direction. Just as I stand to cross the streets, I feel a dainty tap on my shoulder. Oh, that's epic. Looking to my side, the person I've been wanting to see the most recently stands before my eyes. A sight to behold. Good morning. More copy. 
Carrie greets me, her lips curling up slightly into a delicate smile. Good morning, Carrie. As the light turn gr- as the light turns green, we both walk harmoniously across. It's not really a surprise for m- for me to meet Carrie here. I'm pretty sure she did share part of the walk to school with me. This is where I first met her, after all. So, how are you doing today, Carrie? I throw the question out to try and make conversation. I enjoy being with her, but getting her to speak up more would make the experience a lot better. I'm good. Thank you. What about you? I'm good as well. Carrie smiles at my answer. I guess knowing that your friends are in a good spirit is a happy thought. As I take occasional glances to my side, I seem to notice Carrie shyly looking in my direction from time to time as well. She turns her head whenever I spot her. Does she want me to say something? Anything on your mind? (laughs) It seems that I've caught her off guard. I wanted to know. Can I walk to school with you more often? Score! Oh yeah, we're in there. We're in there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go! This is pretty epic. I'm enjoying this. She wants to walk to school with me? That question seems pretty bold for her, but I oblige. Sure thing. Carrie smiles and nods her head cheerfully. I can't deny wanting to walk to school with her as well. I look at my watch to check the time. It's almost quarter to eight. Shall we meet where we met today then? At 7.35? That's good with me. So it's settled then. From today onwards, I'll be meeting and walking with a girl on the way to school. It's not something I expected to happen, but I can't complain. In fact, I'm happy. We pass through the school gates and towards the main building, both of us stopping to part ways. I'll see you later then, Carrie. Lunch, right? Sure. Lunch it is. Epic. I head down the path towards my class. And with my plans for the day pretty much settled. I think that is a fantastic place to stop part three. This game is, uh, dude, there, there was a point when we were the second phone conversation where there wasn't a lot of, uh, narration dialogue. It was just me talking and then Carrie talking like, bro, I think I'm in love like dead, like dead ass. So yeah, if you could, I don't know, like if all you more copy Sue's could help me in this, in this quest to conquer Carrie, that, that sounds weird to, uh, betroth my my love carry like if you can contact the voice actress slash creator of this game and kind of get that um get that all organized and and uh and planned out that would be pretty epic of you if you don't feel like doing that i'll tell you what i'll make you a deal go ahead like comment and subscribe that would be awesome that i will take that any day of the week thank you for watching part three and i love you i love carrie too and as always Help me find a girlfriend. And bye bye